Upon waking up, Sylphie washes her face and stretches to prepare for her morning routine. She almost forgot her cap and decided to turn back. She was always in disguise even in her morning run. He would run around the Sharia, the capital in the kingdom of Ranoa. This enables her to be familiar with the layout of the city and determine her limits. She thinks Reduce will do the same if he is in her shoes. In the classroom, Sifi who now is Fitz is bored of the magic lesson as Reduce taught those when they were young. Princess Ariel asks him how the spell lesson works. Seeing her diligence, he was happy and drew Reduce face. In the afternoon, Fitz together with Princess Ariel and Luke pass through a secret passage that Fitz has discovered in the morning. Luke explained that Sharia city is built like a maze given that it is vulnerable to invasion. Princess Ariel jokes that he's taking the lesson seriously. Luke told him that he was just quoting what they had said. Princess Ariel advises him to be careful in playing in the field, but Luke tells her that he cannot help since he has a notice blood. Fitz realizes that Reduce came from the Noto's family too. Thus he expects that he will be just Luke and Paul his father. He helplessly sighs. At night, Fitz was lying on the bed thinking about how he had thought of Reduce lately. She's foundering what relationship she wants with him. Realizing her answer, she shyly tucks herself. Reduce taught Julie incantation less magic. Zanoba thought that he could not make it, but Julie was able to pull it off in just a month. He thought that only figurines matter to Zanoba, but he is taking care of Julie well. They never thought of branding Julie. For him, she is just another disciple while a junior disciple for Zanoba. At night Zanoba teaches Julie how they should appreciate Rudy's work. They inspect one of his works, the Rudyard figurine. He explains to Julie how magnificent the figurine is when Rudus approaches him and asks him about the Roxy figurine. Zanova instantly flinched and sweated. He told him that he left it in the Shiron kingdom. Rudus does not buy it. So, Zanova confesses that he has it, and Rudus requests for it to see. Zanova opens the box shaking and panting. Seeing the broken figurine, Rudus demanded Zanova to explain himself. Sensing the bad situation, Julie quietly hides behind Zanoba's back. Reduce thought that he was disrespecting Roxy. Zanoba quickly explained that he had a duel with Doldia girls, Linnea and Persina. They challenged him and wagered something important to them. Julie went to pat Zanoba's back. He cried for forgiveness from Reduce but he smiled creepily and told him that he must told him sooner. Reduce contemplates how mean the girls are and that they should teach them a lesson. Zanoba was shocked but agreed. In the afternoon, Linnea and Persina are walking home when they see Zanoba and Reduce standing. Linnea asks about their intention and Persina concludes that they are looking for a fight. Linnea ridicules Zanoba for bringing a scrawny freshman. Zanoba snobs her and Linnea threatens to smash his other doll. Reduce stops Zanoba and states that Linnea and Persina should be the ones to be embarrassed by ganging up on people and that they cannot stand alone. Linnea warns him not to talk and stay in the corner and they will not bother him and he should pick a fight with someone else. Reduce criticizes her and the beasts for not speaking a decent human language. Linnea a hot-headed one gets mad and intends to attack them while Persina uses her voice. Reduce sees through them and orders Zanoba to get Persina. Reduce uses a hand to stop Linnea and with a swift move is able to bring her down, noticing that she's wearing white underwear. Zanoba is running after Persina. Rudius uses his power to stop her and flick with a stone. Julie comes out and they tie the two Doldia girls. When they opened their eyes, they were captive by Rudius. He intends to test his erectile dysfunction and grab Persina breast, but after a while his manhood is still silent. Rudius explained that they had smashed the figurine and that they were in that situation. He explains that the figurine is a model of her goddess. He brought the altar where he stored Roxy's thing, her underwear. Everyone is astonished at the sight. Persina defends herself and tells him that Linnea is the one who stomped the figurine. Linnea retaliate. The two continue to argue about who has the bigger fault. Rudu stops them and thinks of how should they punish them. Linnea scolded him that his father would retaliate if he tried funny things with them. Rudu remembers how he was falsely accused by the Dolja clan, stripped naked, doused with water, and thrown in a prison cell. The two flinched upon hearing this. Linnea appeals to do anything just not to be punished like that, while Persina wishes to be spared and just punish Linnea. 
Rudius told them that in order to be forgiven, they must repair the Roxy figure. They cheered Roxy's figure and Zanoba states that even Rudius cannot repair the figurine. This rings a bell to Rudius. He could fix the figurine if he wanted, thus it left him not knowing what to do with the Doldia girls. In the morning, Rudius explained the situation to Fitz. He realizes that they locked the two girls. Rudius explains that they did nothing sexual to them, only groping their breasts to confirm something. He asks Fitz for advice on how to punish them without leaving them a reason to revenge. Fitz thinks for a while and concludes with a suggestion. At night, when they visit the girls, they are already soiled themselves. They appeal to be not tied and fed and they won't try to escape. Persona promises not to bite nor howl just feed her with meat. Rudeus and Fitz look at each other and decided to help the Dolja girls. Linnea promised to do anything he wants except making babies. While Persina offers Linnea's breast to Rudeus, Linnea agrees but stop upon realization. Rudeus helplessly sigh. Persina plead to go to eat dried meat. Linnea agrees but her tone is a bit arrogant. Fitz scolded them but they retaliate that it is not his business. Reduce angers upon seeing how they treat Fitz and orders them to sit down. The two ended with paint in the face. Fitz warns them that it can be permanent with his incantation. The two frightens. Fitz remind them to not remove the paint in a day. Before going out, Linnea asks Reduce how he managed to track their movements. He answers that it is due to his master's teachings. Linnea asks the name of his master. Reduce contemplates that Ghislaine is the one who teach him swarmanship thus he spills the name. Linnea asks if it is Sword King Ghislaine of the Doldia Kingdom, which Reduce agrees. They realize that it is indeed Linnea's aunt. The two jump out from the window. Reduce asks Fitz about the paint and worries that someone might do the incantation. Fitz confesses that it is all bluff. The paint is nothing but ordinary. Fitz noticed the cabinet where he keeps Roxy's underwear and intends to open it. Rudeus acts quickly and offers to look on anything else. Fitz notices his fellow that rattles and decided to lie down on it. Rudeus is thinking to remove his sunglasses. Fitz asks if he want to see his face. Rudeus agrees and anticipates but turns out that Fitz is only bluffing. He explains that Princess Ariels forbids her to show his face. He then abruptly decided to leave. Rudeus ended contemplating on what will happen if he saw his face. If you've enjoyed this so far, drop down below and show us some love by liking, subscribe and sharing. Next chapter will come out soon enough if not already. But for the meantime, check out our other videos on the screen. I highly recommend the daily life of the immortal king. The link is in the comments section below. Thank you for watching until the end. Subscribe for more videos like this.